Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. This is both a relaxation and a sleep session. There will be two versions, one with, one without music. The music is from Kevin McLeod and his details will be in the description box of the podcast episode. If you're listening for relaxation only, then and you have things to do, for example, you know, you need to go out in an hour's time or something, then I suggest you set your alarm to wake yourself up in case you relax uh, and fall asleep. Because the more time I spend making these recordings, the more I realize that there's not a huge difference between a relaxation recording and a sleep recording. And the gap between being relaxed and being asleep is fuzzy at best. I mean, sometimes that gap is practically non-existent. Especially if you are already feeling tired before you start listening to my voice. There's a good chance that the tiredness Causes, uh, causes your mind to almost fast track you
towards that fuzzy area. Leading to sleep. Because I believe that your body wants what is best for you. And your mind tries to give you what is best for you and what you need. And sometimes I know that it can feel like you're almost fighting yourself. Trying to go to sleep or trying to stay relaxed and I know that sometimes it can feel or maybe has in the past felt like an uphill battle but then when you look at things differently The way you feel about how things have been, used to be, compared to how things will be, noticing changes occurring both physically and emotionally around this subject of being able to relax easier and deeper in all the muscles of your body and also calming your mind so that you can think more clearly calmly And even your breathing seems to improve. As the tension leaves your body. You may know 
notice your hands. And noticing your hands may feel a bit random because you have other parts of your body as well. You've got your feet. There's your legs. There's your shoulders. There's your lower back. There's your jaw. There's your stomach. There is your elbows. I'm always, not always, but sometimes surprised how when I focus on my elbows, I notice that strange, almost twin-like connection with my knees. rest of your legs, you've got your thighs, of course your knees, which then makes me think of my elbows. There's your calf muscles. course you have your shins and your ankles and there's your ribs of course And the ribs are that part of you that maybe, if you're like me, don't really notice so much. And then you realise that actually they're constantly moving. Every time you breathe, and they're protecting your chest, your heart, and your major organs. They're almost invisible when they're covered by the skin. They are like a suit of armor. I almost want to say thank you to my ribs for protecting me, for protecting my heart and my lungs. 
kidneys, my organs in my chest. Of course, you've got your muscles in your stomach. whole abdominal area and I know it's, there's a part of my body that I don't generally give much attention to yet it's doing just as much as any other part really which is my sides So the sides of my body, you know, sort of you move from your belly button all the way around to your sides, just above your hips. It's that area that's being moved when you, when you walk, when you turn being used those muscles when you stand up, sit down, bend over whatever lay down on your bed those muscles are used like little silent heroes that perhaps don't get much acknowledgement whatsoever Maybe a bit like the muscles in your eyes. You consider the sighted people how much we use our eyes, how much you know the muscles in our eyes are being used a lot. If anything, they are overworked. They don't complain. They just get on with it. They don't want anything in return. I just, I know their eyes, okay? I know their muscles. You know, I know that muscles aren't like people. I know that. I'm not, you know, I do know that. But I sometimes feel that wouldn't it be nice if they were and we could actually say thank you. To say thank you to those those muscles in your eyes and say thank you for for your service, you know, thank you for everything that you do for me. my entire life thank you and you know the the vision side of things to be able to see for the whole you know the way that the the eye operates This piece of technical equipment, which is absolutely phenomenal. It's an amazing thing, the eye. Allowing us to do so many things that perhaps we would struggle otherwise to do if it wasn't for our amazing eyes
just like our ears and the hearing. It really is magical. And I know it might sound like I'm being a bit soppy. But it is magical. Being able to hear my voice. even though I'm not actually in the room you're in or wherever you are thanks to the technology not just of the internet and computers and mobile phones and stuff like that but thanks to our ears of being adaptable enough to be able to do what they do converting signals and energy and I don't know much about it all but I know it's amazing spine, your spine if that was a person if you could actually you'd, you'd need to take your spine out for a big meal in fact more than that if your spine was a person we would literally you'd have to just say whatever is mine is yours you can have anything you want because of what an amazing job you do and have always done for me allowing me to walk allowing me to move allowing me to do all those things Allowing me to feel. Then you've got the brain. I mean, wow. The brain would be the king. I kind of like that idea, maybe the the brain is the king and the heart is the queen of course it could be the other way around I think the brain and the heart are beyond such limitations but if your brain was a person no amount of love that you showed towards your brain if, if your brain was a person would ever really do justice for what your brain's done for you your entire life and it continues to do every second of every day Because your brain gives you everything. By loving your brain. By respecting your brain. It seems as if you're letting, letting your brain know that you 
you appreciate it. And how could that do anything else but relax your brain and your mind? How could your mind and your brain feel anything other than relaxed and peaceful, safe and feeling pretty good, in fact? As you express your kindness and gratitude towards your body and your brain and your mind. That energy from that kindness and gratitude which is aimed at all the parts of your body, your limbs, internal organs, your skeleton system, your spinal cord, your brain, your veins, everything. It comes together to create you feel accepted and needed and appreciated. Because you deserve to be happy. And you deserve the, the space that you've given yourself to relax deeply. your body and your mind continue in that direction of deep relaxation containing the energy of gratitude and compassion and kindness towards yourself and the appreciation for all that you do for yourself to keep you well and healthy to keep your immune system strong and to give you that option to be able to let go of everything and relax so very deeply in your body and in your mind. quickly or slowly it's always peacefully 
and safely relaxing. And if you choose to drift even further relaxed even deeper drifting Drifting into a safe, deeply satisfying sleep. It's really up to you. Whether you choose to drift. to that satisfying sense of being covered in that gentle healing sleep and sometimes just deciding that you're going to let go of everything
sense. A slowly, slowly edging closer. a sense of the peacefulness that surrounds you like that blanket of comfort causing you to feel number causing